Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Manduka, the Chief Investment Officer of GXO. Over the last five years, GXO has outperformed the economy and the overall warehouse market, as well as the outsourced market. To break this down, over the period of 2017 to 2021, we've seen physical product revenue, in other words, the volume of goods and economic activity, grow 3%. At the same time, due to powerful tailwinds and increased value add within the warehousing market, we've seen the market grow faster at 4%. We've seen third-party logistics providers grow even faster than this at 6%, reflecting the value add that they provide. And GXO grew faster still at some 8% as a result of the combination of factors which I'll now take you through. As Malcolm just articulated, we expect to grow even faster over the next five years. This growth will be based on a combination of one, baseline economic growth, two, the three secular tailwinds of outsourcing, e-commerce and supply chain resiliency, including the trend of nearshoring, and three, what we call the GXO difference. In this part of the presentation, we're gonna focus on these three secular tailwinds, i.e. the second bucket, and then Bill and the rest of the team are gonna address what sets us apart. So the first secular tailwind propelling GXO is outsourcing. Over the last five years, the outsourced portion of the market has outgrown the broader market. We expect this outperformance to continue as the benefits of economies of scale and rising technological complexity make the outsourced offering even more compelling. As of 2021, the industry is 32% outsourced. But if you look at the table to the right, in certain verticals, including some of our core verticals here at GXO, the outsourced share is much lower. We expect the total addressable warehousing market of $456 billion to grow to $660 billion by 2027, and the percentage of the market that's outsourced to grow from 32% to 35% in the coming years. That represents growth of 58%. Even if GXO were not to win any incremental market share, outsourcing would contribute approximately 2% compound annual growth rate over the coming years. It's also worth remembering within the outsourced market how fragmented the industry is, with the top five players in contract logistics having a combined market share of less than 8% of the total addressable market in 2021. When we compare that to similar industries in asset-like business support services, such as contract catering, hotel management, and business services itself, a 25 to 30% market share for the top five players is that much more typical. Secondly, unlike traditional brick and mortar, with e-commerce, each item needs to be sorted and separated and individual packages need to be created to be shipped to the end consumer. This creates demand for a far greater degree of sophistication throughout the fulfillment process and a compelling revenue multiplier effect for GXO. But it really doesn't stop there. More e-commerce also means more returns. Roughly one in three items are being returned in the e-commerce environment. The increased touch points mean higher revenue capture for the warehouse provider. And e-commerce is increasing as a share of overall commerce, and it will continue to do so. The pandemic certainly accelerated this trend, but it's been a long-term shift in consumer behavior for many years. Over the six-year period, e-commerce penetration is expected to increase from 20% to approximately 29% in GXO's core markets as consumers continue to shift their spending online. What that means for the industry is an extra revenue contribution of approximately 20 to $30 billion over the six-year period. All else equal, that equates to the approximately 1% incremental revenue contribution for GXO. The need to make supply chains more resilient has driven a trend towards holding more inventory, 
the concept of just-in-case rather than just-in-time. Industry estimates suggest that there will be a structural shift of 3 to 4% more inventory being held in warehouses across the economy. Moreover, nearshoring has been a pervasive global theme over the last few years. We're seeing this very clearly in the US semiconductor industry and expect many other verticals to follow the trend of pursuing resiliency in their supply chains through the theme of nearshoring. Our research estimates that 3.5 trillion dollars in global goods exports will move to new countries before 2027 as a result of a renewed focus on supply chain diversification. And while it's hard to be precise about how much of this will accrue to each region, each 1% of these global goods that moves to Europe and to North America will represent a $1 billion warehousing opportunity. Combined, we're confident that these factors will represent an annual incremental revenue growth of 1% for the industry over the period in question. So, all in all, based solely on the baseline economic growth and those three secular tailwinds that I've discussed, we're expecting between 6 to 8% annual growth in this business. But that's only part of the growth story. We're going to continue to take an outsized share of the market by leveraging that GXO difference. And now, I'm going to turn it over to our Chief Commercial Officer, Bill Frain, and the rest of the team, who are going to specifically address while we continue to outgrow the market and the GXO difference.